Okay, let's continue with the third um, part of our instruction tonight. Uh, now we will continue exactly with the use that passive sentences have in English. Well, let me tell you something. In English, um, with respect to what can and may occur in Spanish, passive sentences are going to have a higher amount of presence. Actually, the presence of passive voice when writing, when carrying out any communicative act, whenever writing or speaking, passive sentences, but especially uh, writing, passive sentences are going to be uh, and are going to have more occurrence in the text and in the normal speech than, for example, it can be in Spanish. Because of the fact that in Spanish we have another structure that, well, that structure has to do with impersonal sentences. The fact that we have se, in order to say something like aquí se habla inglés, or en ese lugar se venden tamales, or aquí no se hace lo que usted diga, sino lo que yo digo, and having some sentences like that, the fact of having this non-personal structure, which is se, non-personal pronoun, which is se, facilitates the fact of omitting the need for using passive sentences in Spanish. But in English, we don't count on that se. So what is exactly the way those sentences are going to be said in English? Well, starting from passive sentences. So passive sentences, according to what I explained, will have a higher occurrence in English than in Spanish. So let's see the use, for example. Um, whenever we say se in Spanish, for example, aquí se habla inglés, once more it places the lack of importance in terms of who does the action. The least important thing is to say who does it. Of course it is the people around and everybody having to do with the context, but this is not important, that is why we say se. Um, for example, allí se venden tamales, the same situation. The least important thing is to mention and refer to who is the one in charge of doing the action? Of course, it will have to be a person or some people, but we say, say, just to avoid the importance of expressing that person. But um, whenever we have English sentences, we need to have a subject. And of course, in English, what we'll have to use in that regard is a passive sentence. So let's say, for example, um, an example I had already referred to, Ferrari cars are made in Italy. So in this case, we prefer the use of a passive sentence because I don't want to refer to who is the one in charge of doing that. Of course it is a company, of course, uh, there are some technicians or some people, some mechanics and some experts, some engineers having to do with that, but this is not important to be mentioned. So I say Ferrari cars are made in Italy, okay? Um, I can also say something this way. Tango is danced in Argentina. Okay, so whenever your intention as a speaker or as a writer is not to privilege the importance of mentioning who is the one in charge of doing the action, well, um, prefer to use a passive sentence, right? Passive voice in general. Tango is danced in Argentina. I'm going to give you a third example. Um, America, well, the American continent, huh? America, was discovered in 1492. Well, in this case, I have preferred to include some um, information related to time. Here it is information related to place in Italy, in Argentina, but here I gave information in terms of time. So whatever the kind of information is, um, sometimes it is not important to mention who the person in charge of the action is or was, as in this case. America was discovered in 1492. But if you consider that the 
information on who does the action is really relevant. So in that case, you can prefer, you can and might prefer to use an active sentence. For example, saying something like this. Christopher Columbus discovered America discovered America in 1492. Well, the fact of including the information on who does the action or who did the action uh, makes us and places us in, a, in the possibility and in the need for using an active sentence. Here, for example, we have preferred to use an active sentence, but it doesn't mean that a passive sentence is bad over there. So we can also carry out this sentence in terms of the usage of a passive structure. And we can say something like this. America was discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1492. Okay, so we can say that too. And this is um, something really uh, natural too. It is a common occurrence. But something, um, one fact is well clear for sure. The fact that when the need for you to refer to the person that does the action, did the action, etc., is um, practically eliminated because you don't want to consider it, prefer and privilege, please, the use of a passive sentence. So that is exactly we, uh, something we can do. And that is the way things, for example, work when dealing with academic texts that you have to write, for example, essays, etc., cetera, or um, some, any, any manifestation of academic work, any manifestation of academic writing in English is going to place you in, a, in more possibilities for you to use passive sentences than, for example, the ones for the amount of opportunities that can take place when Spanish pieces of homework or academic work uh, have to be carried out. So this is um, in terms of the use and the usage. Ferrari cars are made in Italy. Tango is danced in Argentina. America was discovered in 1492. Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, and we prefer to use an active sentence. But once more, it doesn't mean that, that a passive. It doesn't mean that a passive sentence cannot be used. Okay, America was discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1492. Okay, now I'm going to continue with the last part of our explanation tonight and our session which will have to do with some special cases at which we um, are going to detect that not necessarily the direct object is going to constitute the central part or at least the subject in the passive sentences. You will see this in a moment. So let's continue with it. Okay, now. We have already seen this. So I'm going to retake what we have already studied and seen. Um, my sister gave the keys. Look, we have now, one more time, the three essential components that a sentence has, and sentences in general have. The subject, the verb, and what constitutes the information um, as an answer for the question what. Okay, my sister gave what? The keys. Okay, and now we already know how to order the transformation. We can say the keys were given by my sister. But sometimes we can also include information on who gets benefited or actually harmed when the action is done. So, and in that case, can you remember what the structure is in the sentence? Can you remember? 
Yeah, of course, it is the indirect object. So let's say now, my sister gave the keys to the teacher. And remember, according to what we had studied last week, that we have two possibilities for this sentence to take presence and to take place in English. We can express the direct object first, and then later on referring to the indirect object, or we can do it the contrary. So we can say, my sister gave the teacher the keys. And in this case, what we have done with respect to sentence number one is interchanging the order in which the two elements appear. So my sister gave the teacher the keys. The indirect object uh, took place here first, and then later on, the direct object appeared. Okay, whatever the structure is, sometimes the passive sentence um, doesn't focus the attention on the direct object. Sometimes it is focused on the indirect object. And you will say, teacher, how come? You will see it in a moment. Okay, look at this. Um, the keys, I'm going to start from what you have done before, right? The keys were given to the teacher by my sister. But now, well, this is what exactly you have known and studied. This is a normal way it is. I mean, the keys were given, okay, to the teacher by my sister. But now let's focus our attention on the teacher itself, which is the indirect object. Now we can say the teacher, and this maybe will be kind of new for some of you, the teacher will be given the keys. And we can finish the sentence here, or we can say, by my sister. And sometimes you will say, teacher, how come that can be possible? It resembles, and it seems, the fact that the teacher is the one who is given. I mean, the teacher is the one who is handed in. No, of course it doesn't have, and it can't be understood that way, this is a structure which is not present in Spanish, but it is present in English. The teacher will be given the keys by my sister. And any verb that, for example, requires the presence of a direct object and an indirect object too, will be in the possibility for the transformation to be performed and uttered and carried out this way. I'm going to give you another example. Um, Jennifer told Michael the truth. Or, according to what we had known for sure, Jennifer told the truth to Michael. Jennifer told Michael the truth, or Jennifer, Jennifer sorry, told the truth to Michael. Well, the transformations will be performed this way. This is exactly what we have known. I'm going to begin with the last one, right? The truth was told to Michael by Jennifer. Okay? Right. And now, if we focus our attention on the center, the focus constitutes the indirect object, we can say it this way, by following the same pattern that we showed before. So, we will say, Michael was told the truth by Jennifer. 
So we can or we may not, if we prefer not to do it, include some information on the agent. I mean the agent complement, which is in this case Jennifer, or by Jennifer. Michael was told the truth by Jennifer. And maybe we can say, teacher, how come? Is Michael told? So is Michael a sentence or is Michael anything that can be told? No, it doesn't have to be understood that way. Actually, it can't be understood that way. But it is a sentence that is more um, frequent in English. Of course, in Spanish, it doesn't take place. Michael was told the truth. And you will see that uh, the same agreement is shown whenever we have the trend. So the, the teacher will be given, oh, I'm, I'm referring to this one. Um, Michael was told the truth by Jennifer. The truth was told to Jennifer by Michael. Well, in this case, I did it, I did it in future. I'm going to uh, do it in the corresponding past tense. We can say something like this. Let's do it in the corresponding past tense. And I'm going to do the active one in future too. Uh, the teacher, and I'm going to exert this correction here. I was thinking of the future in this case. The teacher was given the keys by my sister. And I'm going to um, work on the future one too for you to have the agreement over there. My sister will give the teacher the keys. Right. My sister will give the, key, the teacher. My sister will give the teacher the keys. The teacher will be given the keys by my sister. And now my sister gave the teacher the keys. The teacher was given the keys by my sister. Now we can have the two examples um, ordered and pre presented here in terms of having the right agreement. My sister will give and the teacher will be given. My sister gave and the teacher was given the keys by my sister. So excuse me because of that uh, maybe moment at which I was thinking about the future when indeed I was and I had presented a, an example in, in past, but now the conception is clear. I repeat, whenever we have the need for the object, I mean the indirect object of the sentence to constitute the focus on the, um, on the passive sentence by being the subject, so we can order that without any complication. This is a structure that is not um, frequent in Spanish, but it is in English. Once more, my sister gave the teacher the keys. The teacher was given the keys by my sister. Or, my sister will give the teacher the keys, and the teacher will be given the keys by my sister. And I was saying, now let's return to what I was explaining before, that the agreement is perfect all the time. The teacher was given. The truth was told. The teacher is the subject, the truth is the subject, Michael in this case is the subject, okay, let's analyze this, the teacher is the subject and Michael is the subject, was is present, was is present too, taking into account that this is past, past participle of the verb, past participle of the verb, and then exactly the direct complement, or the direct object, the keys and the truth, and finally the agent, the agent complement, by my sister and by Jennifer. Well guys, um, these are the considerations and actually the conceptions having to do with passive sentences and this has been our session for tonight. Thank you for your attention and let's see, actually we'll see each other once more in our next encounter which will take place next week. Okay, bye bye, God bless you.